and gentlemen, every year it is the custom of the club to invite a representative of one of the many societies and bodies with which Sir Walter was associated to join us at our annual dinner. Tonight, I'm delighted to welcome Lieutenant Colonel James Campbell Barnard, who commands the newly raised Scottish and North Irish Yeomanry. Now, this unit is the successor by a long and tortuous route of the Royal Edinburgh Light Dragoons, which was a corps of volunteers raised in 1797 when Britain was facing the unappetizing prospect of having to repel the might of Napoleon Bonaparte and his victorious French army. The volunteer dragoons were gentlemen, mounted and armed at their own expense, who formed the right troop of the Royal Midlothian Light Cavalry, which was commanded by the Honorable Lieutenant Colonel Henry Dundas. Scott was the quartermaster and the secretary of the troop, and he loved to gallop up and down the sands of Portobello, composing in his head as he rode. If the French had chosen to invade, the volunteers could well have been called into action, and if they had been, to stir their blood, Scott even composed a war song for the unit, which finished with the cry, to horse, to horse, the sabres gleam, high sounds our bugle call. Combined by honour's sacred tie, our word is laws and liberty. March forward, one and all. I can't see how they could have stood still after hearing that. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise and raise your glasses for our toast to the successor of the Royal Edinburgh Light Dragoons, the Scottish and North Irish Yeomanry. The Scottish and North Irish Yeomanry. Thank you very much. Well, now I'm very pleased indeed to ask the commanding officer of the unit, Lieutenant Colonel James Campbell Barnard, MBE, to respond to our toast. James. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for both the toast to uh, the Scottish and North Irish Yeomanry and providing me the opportunity uh, to formally respond tonight. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for, for inviting me as well. Um, as Alice has just mentioned, SNOY today represent sort of involvement in the Royal Edinburgh Light Dragoons by a long and, as Alice has said, convoluted route that stretches back nearly 220 years. It's seen a successive um, raising and disbandment of the various regiments, and I have a long list kindly provided for me by Alice, which I won't read out tonight. <laughs> but the fact that there's two and a half pages just shows how much change uh, we've all experienced um, over those two centuries. And we think we have change now um, in the military, but well, we only have to look back I mean, the annuals of time to see that um, it is no different to what our forebears have experienced. The current incarnation of the SNRY only officially entered the Army's order of battle on the 31st of October of last year and fell out as part of the Army's reorganisation under Army 2020. We've been largely forged out of previous Yeomanry orbit uh, spread over Northern Ireland and across the central belt of, uh, of Scotland. And we're the newest regiment in the Army and we're the only one under Army 2020 to acquire a new cap badge. To meet this requirement, all the officers of the squadron sat down uh, in Craigie Hall, at the old home of Seckle 2 Div, um, to, the, to the west of Edinburgh uh, last year, and they started to thrash out what this cap badge should be. And this is always a very delicate operation when such opportunity arises, because obviously everyone is very proud of their traditions, uh, their mottos, their, their, um, their sayings, and, and, their, and their parts that form their cap badge, which often have been forged out of many previous antecedent regiments. So boldly uh, they went forward and actually by the end of the day they'd abandoned the whole lot of it and come up with a very unique brand, a wolf's head, with, the, with cross lances behind to mark some of tradition uh, that had, had been incorporated into previous cap badges. But a wolf head is a brand that really seems to be appealing uh, to the youth, to the very people that we're trying to recruit at the moment. So we are delighted to buy it. And you may see some various marketing and advertising material across Scotland, and especially in Edinburgh, where we try to get some rather sort of uh, fluorescent ye yellow uh, eyes to really shine out and really catch people's <laughs> attention. So we're, we're delighted by it. We see the wolf as very striking and reflecting of what we do with light cavalry, which the term that uh, General Sir Nick Carter uh, brought back in. He was very enthused by how the Americans have kept the cavalry traditions going. 
Whereas for the, in, the, in the British Army, cavalry <coughs> tends to sort of relate to rather sort of traditional uh, roles of horses and, and therefore perhaps isn't seen as one of the more modern capabilities that we have. But light cavalry is, is very much uh, fast, bold in activity on, on quick, versatile vehicles and really will be a useful tool uh, in, the, um, in the military capability as we move forward into uncertain times. So under command, we have now taken over some very famous subunits, uh, such as the Ayrshire Yeomanry, the Fife and Forfa, uh, which amalgamated the Scottish Horse uh, previously, and based in Cooper, and then the North Irish Horse Squadron, uh, based in Belfast, who keep us sane uh, on this side of the water. And I've got 25 of those soldiers who've been up in Barry Budden this week uh, on a courses camp, uh, out in Edinburgh tonight, and I promise I'll go and join them uh, for a pint after tonight, so um, wish me luck. <laughs> uh, all three um, of these squadrons were inherited from the Queen's Own Yeomanry, whose new Army 2020 all that uh, focused them exclusively south of the border. However, we must be taken on these very well recruited and very well established uh, squadrons. We've been provided with the primary challenge of establishing a new regimental headquarters in the heart of Edinburgh as well as a 117-man strong headquarters squadron, whilst also developing our blossoming relationship with our paired or regular unit, a unit some of you may well know well, the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards, who are currently located in Germany, but due to come back to Scotland and be based in Lucas uh, over the coming months. Of course, you'd be very interested to learn that for our new squadron based here in Edinburgh, um, and after varying uh, proposals, but we've decided to resurrect the term, or the name, the Lothian and Border Yeomanry. It draws on some inspiring history that, as we have heard, stretched back to Sir Walter's time as, court, as quartermaster in the Royal Edinburgh Light Dragoons. This title had been previously adopted by the first line of the Lothian and Border during the Second World War, while the second line continued to be referred at that time as a Lothian and Border Horse. The two regiments subsequently came together post-war and the term Yeomanry was dropped, with the regiment, or the Lothian and Borders Horse Regiment, existing up until their disbandment in 1956. However, there was a final flurry uh, to this historic title, as it was raised as a headquarters squadron within the Scottish Yeomanry uh, in the 90s, before sadly that regiment, after a period of only eight years, was sadly disbanded um, in 1999 as part of the 1998 Strategic Defence Review and the Lothian and Border Horse was consigned to history. However, the, we've decided to use the yeomanry title um, of the Lothian Border Horse and we're now actively trying to um, encourage former members of the association and anyone that's had any uh, connections with the horse over the years uh, to make contact as we try and gather back that association, bring it back to life and also discover where all the property went much of which uh, I feel has been squealed away. <laughs> so in conclusion, I am hugely privileged to find myself in command of the SNOI and to have in its ranks, embryonic though it may be for now, such an exciting new squadron with such a proud and distinguished history. We will, I am sure, do Sir Walter's memory proud here in Edinburgh. And with our Wolf brand now out, we are obviously very keen to encourage anyone that has an interest in the reserves at this exciting time for the reserves to look at the Scottish, the Scottish and North Irish Yeomanry. Scotland has got its cavalry back, and of course it goes without saying it's got its wolf back as well. A very exciting time for me and for my regiment, and thank you very much for letting me, for inviting me to talk to you this evening. Thank you.